What's up, Juicy Fam? It's your boy Juju. And it's your CC. And you know what it is? We are back with, with another, another video. video. So basically, this is an informative video or a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like an awareness. Mm. Mm, that's the word I'm looking for. Like awareness to what is going on or what the condition is that CC has. Obviously, you guys can see in the thumbnail. And the title that she does have a condition, and it is serious, mm. serious. Um, and the reason why we 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 doing this video is because not a lot of people actually knows about this condition. Woman. It yeah, it's woman. It's to do mm. with. I don't think it will. No, doesn't no. have anything to do with men. Um. Yeah, so we had a long debate about should we be doing this video. Actually, she was like in two minds whether she should do it or not. Because I brought it under tension. And yeah, there's a reasons why she didn't want to do it. But at the end of it, she decided to do this. So um, I'm just doing the like the intro part. Like she's going to be talking mostly about what's this all about and all those kind of mm -hmm. things. So yeah. Are you feeling like you're ready to give them the news? Mm -hmm. So, um, before we start, make sure to give this video a like, comment down below, smash that subscribe button if you guys are new to our channel, and also turn on your post notifications to get our latest videos as soon as we upload them. Fact. So, <clears throat> this is it. Before we get to hear what Cece's got to say, the reason why she didn't want to do this video is because she thinks that sometimes this could be like attention seeking or for people to have pity or sympathy, you know, with what she's going through. Like it's fine for them to like feel some type of way, but she doesn't want people like to treat her differently or feel like this is like a attention seeking type of situation where she just wants you know mm. all those you, you get what i'm saying because people do it like for the wrong reasons and i told them like the literally the only reason why i'm making this video today is to spread awareness because it's come under my attention that not a lot of girls women know about it and that it has been something that's like Basically, just like swept under the rug by doctors and like they'll probably be fine, but actually you're not fine. So that's the reason why I'm doing this today. Also, like the reason why I felt like I shouldn't be doing it is because to me, there's so many people going through so worst much things. worse things. But I have a friend that actually has a lot more going on and she always keeps reminding me that... Um, you might be going through like one thing alone but it matters and it's not less than anyone else going through something so that's also something that pushes me to still raise awareness about it okay. so i don't know do you want to mention what it is that you've been feeling before you actually found out yeah. like can you tell them like what 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 you've been feeling what was going through you before you actually decided to actually have a checkup and finding mm. out like what what's all wrong okay so before i went for a checkup and got the the diagnosis and things like that what i've been feeling and th these are things that i now know that was symptoms that i never realized because i was like normal people go through this mm. you know because you don't go to a person and ask do you do do you feel like this right now do you feel you know you don't do that as a human you just okay i'm supposed to feel like this you know this is what we go through okay so my main things is i've always struggled with joint pain you can ask him like in winter my fingers literally like lock up Sometimes in summer yeah. too, like I'll be holding a cup and he has to like remove the cup from my hand because it's like, it's stuck. Yeah, it just doesn't want to move. And then I literally have to like move her fingers and stretch it out again. Sometimes mm -hmm. with the legs as well, if she's sat for too long oh. with the legs bent mm -hmm. and then I'll have to kind of like press it straight. But that the knees is also like slightly injury, but that is <laughs> something that also I didn't know like mm. comes in with this whole thing. Then this might be TMI for people watching, but painful periods painful menstruation 
like super painful to the point where you cannot stand up you crying no amount of pain tablets is helping you i remember like the one thing before i had my checkups they literally had to like give me a sleeping tablet so i can just go sleep because my pain was that bad and i want all girls to know painful periods might not be normal doctor might say it's normal go to a gynae don't go to a doctor trust me i went to the clinic they said i'm normal and i clearly was not um so pains definitely and then i had like weird pains through the month um like by my pelvic area i won't say like ovaries i'd say like around my pelvic area they would be like these sharp stinging pains sometimes when like when i move too quick it feels like it stretches it's sore and then she has to stand still like a statue then she can't yeah, even move at I all can't. then i just stop crying because any movement is so that pulls it even further makes it feel like you're pulling further exactly and then another thing that's tmi when i have to go to the bathroom i get like painful cramps to go to the bathroom like even like while i'm sitting on the toilet sometimes it, i might be in pain like by my pelvic area like my uterus side and i always thought like okay it's normal because sometimes i hear people say oh i have a cramp you know i need to go mm. and i thought that was normal you know yeah. but not every single time you have to go wee or like every second time and things like that like that's things that's just not normal mm. other thing also is migraines headaches oh my word you guys know how many times i've seen in videos like i have a headache oh i'm getting a headache i think that's something that's even shown in our videos like that's that's a major problem for mm. me is the headaches and and tiredness fatigue fatigue yeah that's a big one um the fact that i'm sometimes like drained like with half a day of working or something like that i'm just so tired and i'm tired at night i just want to go sleep um yeah like that's so, yeah that's basically all that mm, you had that's my on. symptoms basically and like also tmi but like the thing that also struck me is painful intercourse like it's not supposed to be painful you know what i mean so that also struck me because i felt like what's wrong with me you know what i mean um like afterwards also like two days afterwards i'd be super bloated and just so in pain so yeah. yeah that's also something so basically that was it like she said a friend told her like she might have a condition a mm -hmm. friend actually mentioned it to her yeah my friend was like i'm pretty sure you have this when i told her like my symptoms and things because she's experienced she was like it honestly sounds to me like you have this you have to go check out check it out so i went to the clinic and they did not help me at all like at Literally. all i went first i went to the pharmacy and i was put on antibiotics because they thought i had an infection Then I went to the clinic that also put me on antibiotics because I also thought I had an infection. Okay, I'm not saying anything towards the pharmacy because they can only do so much at the pharmacy. They take a pee sample and that's what they work with. Okay. Um but the clinic I'm I was like, okay, and then I had to wait 6 weeks, 6 yeah. weeks to for my results to get back. After sitting there a whole day, okay, six weeks, I go back and they just tell me, oh, it's negative, you can come back in 10 years for another test, blah, blah. I was like, there's no way in hell that I'm normal and that this is okay. And they didn't tell me what it could be, what could be causing this. They just said, eh, it's negative, that's it. Yeah. Like, that's literally all the information I got. And then I was just so angry, I just stormed out of there. And then I told my mom and then we made a guy in the appointment. So, yeah. so then basically... She went to the appointment, gave her side of of the story and what she's feeling, and then they gave you pills to yeah. use for three months. Three months. Yeah. For three months to see whether this is the condition that she that she has, like to to kind of like confirm that it is. Yeah. They gave her pills to kind of work against this condition, and if it does help her within the three months, then it's very likely that she does have this condition. Mm. So then we went or oh, she went through this three months and you finished when? About a couple of weeks back. It was two weeks. Two, two weeks back. Uh, when she actually found out that uh, she does have this condition. So um, it ended up being endometriosis. You I think I, 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 think, I, yeah, I wanted to say like I think I can pronounce it because she kind of struggles sometimes mm. with it. So 
um, for those who does not know, endometriosis is a condition where the lining of your of your uterus is, which is supposed to be on the inside of your uterus is growing on the outside of your uterus. So I had some knowledge on that. So that's that's what that's what caused us so much pain. Uh, yeah. especially with the period and stuff like that because it grows, because it grows and it gets thicker and thicker yeah so that's why she had so many pains and um they actually gave her the spills which kind of combats that and tries and thins out the the lining mm, it breaks all of that tissue down basically yeah so yeah she found out she got this condition and when we when we went to check out um you know, the side effects and stuff like that about the condition. It does mention that it is a lifelong condition. Yeah. It can be couple of for years. a couple of years, but okay. it's the the chances of the chances of it being lifelong is like eighty percent to me. Mm. Definitely. So yeah, it's a lifelong condition that she has and there was like struggles. So there is like struggles with this um condition that we found out that she has um she has to be on pulse for the rest of her life for this condition yeah um, look in i'm going back in six months um just for a general checkup and then she's gonna see where i'm at because some people are lucky they stop getting it like mm-hmm. it just stops you know that's why it says could be for years or lifelong like sometimes it just stops um, so that's why I'm going to go for probably for checkups every six months to see where I'm at. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm staying on the tablets. Yeah. So that's also a big issue because the, how can I say, the pricing of this pills and tablets that she needs to get is a lot. And it's a big issue and she finds it very difficult. You know, a lot of times she breaks down about it because... It takes a huge strain on her financial well-being. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it's not like we find anything. It's not like life is easy at the moment. Yeah. Anyway, so mm-hmm. having this pulse that she needs to take, and it costs this much, like, it's a lot. It's a lot to, 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 to handle. Yeah. Um, besides other issues that she also needs to, you know, worry about mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So that is one negative about it. Um, another one is because of this, um, she's taking pills that's obviously, um, stopping a cycle. Because it's hormone based. It's like a hormonal type of pill that she's using. So now it's stopping a cycle, which in turn makes it very unlikely or Mm -hmm. difficult. Difficult. Let's just say difficult. Let's just say difficult, which will make it very difficult. If ever we do plan on having kids, like it's a big issue, like endometriosis in general can cause infertility because the tissues can either grow on your ovaries, which some people have is cysts. So endometriosis, you get a few stages. I'm luckily not in any stage where I have cysts, where I have to get a surgery or a laparoscopy or whatever that word is, because it's not actually surgery. It's like, you know, it's, it's complicated but i'm if you guys know of people that has endometriosis and that went for the surgery they went for the surgery because there was cysts there was things that they can actually physically remove it has gotten that bad that they might not have pain but they have those little cysts and things that the doctor can actually remove with me it's not that bad and that's why she's preventing it to ever go that far and also with if you get the laparoscopy or whatever that word is the surgery i'm just gonna call it surgery then it takes it away for a few years because they take out that lining and everything. Um, and then it can come back. So it's not like a sick thing. And with me and my financial things, I don't have medical aid or anything. So the pull is the better option for me. And she doesn't want to do anything invasive that I might not need. Mm. So just for you people that does know endometriosis and, that, and is thinking like, why doesn't she just go for surgery? It's not that simple in my case because yeah. it doesn't show up on the scans internally because I don't have cysts and things growing yet. But you can perfectly clearly see with my first scan and my second scan, the lining we could see definitely because this is like this thin line inside of my uterus that you can actually also see that got thinning. So that also helped that. 
So that's <laughs> that's it in a nutshell. Like I think that's the worst. Mm-hmm. Like having to stay on this pill lifelong, the chances of you having kids is very very minimal. If we yeah. decide on having kids, look, we can get help. We can adopt. We can get help with pregnancy. We can go see her. We can work out like a five year plan or whatever to to get pregnant and things. So it's not impossible. Mm. But it makes the natural process and that's like the hardest pull for me to swallow because we've talked about it. We were like, we want to have kids one day and then we're like, the world is what it is. So we don't know if we want. And for me, it was like, okay, it's going to happen naturally if it should happen. You know, and now that that naturally part of it is now taken away, <laughs> now it's like, okay, now what do I actually want? You know, mm-hmm. now it's making you think like a choice that you have is just stripped away from you. It's like yeah. now you actually have to plan it and get into it. Mm. You know? So that is basically the story mm. behind everything. So um, did we leave out anything? I don't think so. I'm, I, I would like to read to you guys what other symptoms um, you can have. Because that was my selected symptoms. Um. Oh, yeah, I see. The the one I forgot to mention is lower back pain. He knows how much I struggle yeah. with lower back pain. I tell him sometimes I come from work and I'm like, it feels like some a truck is sitting on my back. And that was always a symptom and I never knew. Um, but this is what people may experience for you girls out there that already has a painful period or go for longer, longer period times with your period, say like for more than a week. Just go check it out by a gynae. Don't go to a doctor. Just go to a gynae. But this is what you might experience. So pain areas is your lower abdomen, lower back, pelvis, rectum, or, or private part. I'm going to say that. Um, pain circumstances can occur during sexual intercourse or while defecating. Defic- that's like, you know. Mm-hmm. And then your menstrual would be abnormal menstruation, heavy menstruation, Ill- irregular menstruation, and painful, or you just spot. That's everything you've got. <laughs> that's everything You've got I everything have. that you just mentioned. And then uh, gastrointestinal, something like that, constipation or nausea. And then abdom- abdomen- abdom- abdominal. Abdominal. <laughs> and I'm sorry, guys. Um, it's abdominal fullness or cramping, which I had a cute, like, that's just natural for me. Mm-hmm. Also common is infertility. Now, that is like a big one because a lot of people confuse and say, but endometriosis does not cause infertility or is infertility. It, it is like everything that stands on this like screen is everything that I confirmed with my doctor, with my gynae. And sometimes you wonder why can't you have babies, you know, you've been flowing heavy, everything's going good. That might be the reason and you don't know. Mm. So yeah, this video to me is just literally just informative and to tell you guys that this is out there and like you don't have to feel stupid for having these symptoms and like, you know, because I do, I tell him like all the time, I feel like an old lady, like why do (laughs) I feel like this? Um, Yeah. Like, it's natural and it's okay that you are going through it. And also share your awareness if you do. I know for me it's difficult because I don't like people looking down on you or be like, oh, you are this. So, you know, you know how people get these mm-hmm. days. You know, they're so, um, what do you call it? You know, I can't get to that. <laughs> but I just want you guys to know that it's okay. And like my friend told me as well, like these support groups, these support systems and literally surround yourself with people that can understand if you're not feeling well, why you are not feeling well and not push you away. Yeah. Anyway, guys, so that is it. Like that's what she found out that she's got. Uh, It's a hard one to swallow. It's very difficult right now. Um, I know like obviously on this video right now, we're more composed. And we want to explain to you guys, like, yeah. what it's all about and all this. But behind the scenes, yeah. if the camera is off, it's a whole different thing. Like, yeah. there's more emotions to this. It's way more difficult to handle than how we are approaching it, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, so, yeah, it's very tough, especially mentally. It's it's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> very challenging, like I can see firsthand. Um, but, yeah, she's handled it well. Um, I mean, to the extent, like, obviously, it's not going to be, like, it's just, you know. <laughs> symptoms is still symptoms, but I feel like how you prepare yourself mentally for it. Like, I told him, I'm never going to see myself as a person that 
I am this, like you are not that, you can make more of that. I know your symptoms control you sometimes, but mm. just keep trying, keep a positive mind. I think what takes me the most is the financial burden that I feel. It's it's heavy. I feel like I'm just like his like, financial burden. Like I cry and then I tell him, I'm sorry, like I'm doing this to you because I don't have like much left at the end of the month because of this, because of the, the tablet, the um, tablets you get to stop the what do you call it the hair loss um, to stop the hair loss to stop the nausea tablets, the, so the pain so all of that tablets add up to a big amount um so i yeah. think financial strain is the biggest thing for me i've kept positive about this like quite well i would say it's just the financial strain i think is getting me the most yeah because i mean it's not something she asked for um you know and now suddenly boom you get it with this and like it's like you have to <laughs> sort yourself out yeah. with this every single month like you were you were really finding it difficult before even getting this and now this is like a must get you know <laughs> yeah it's like you, <laughs> so, you can't not get it otherwise yeah. you're just gonna make yourself worse because so if she doesn't do? like it will start you know developing again and getting worse so she has to constantly be on it yeah but uh guys that is the video guys um why am i missing that that is the video guys <laughs> i hope you guys um found a lot out of this and for those women who does not know or think they might have it now just please make sure to just it's the it's it's easy to say but i know it's difficult to actually go because it's also financial stability if you have the, the capital to actually go and get a checkup mm -hmm. which she had to save up over a few months before <laughs> yeah, the first appointment. yeah it's it's difficult mm. like it's not easy we can say like just go have a checkup but it could be difficult we don't know your so yeah. circumstances stuff like that but if possible just try and save up to get that if you feel like you could possibly have this symptom um, this condition yeah. um yeah but like we never knew about this this condition until like she actually went and went to go find out about and our this. Friend and told me that. Yeah, like yeah. we never knew anything like this. She was like the first one, and I was like, "What? What this is, is this? Such a weird word. Like, what is this even?" Yeah. But turns out, like, I should have just listened. To <laughs> um. So that's a video, guys. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. If you wanna know more, obviously, just Google endometriosis. You guys can see for yourselves, like. Yeah what you need to do and stuff like that don't always trust google but like the things that they say about endometriosis i confirmed with my gynae so like the first page that they pull up for you um you guys can trust that page it's very accurate it looks like this Second, uh, yeah like that so it looks like an overview and then okay but they saw so it looks like an overview and, and then you can just check it's totally accurate i did confirm it so yeah you guys are good to go as always, guys, stay lit. Stay awesome. Stay juicy. We are. We are.